Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, hope you're all okay. I just wanted to talk you through a presentation that I drew together on modern day radio scanning. So first we'll go through an introduction to the scanning hobby. So anyone will tell you that radio scanning is not what it used to be and there's nothing left to listen to anymore. So it is true, there's less to listen to nowadays and with the advent of mobile phone technology, computers and data modes, there's less and less users opting for radio communications. The bands are still active with a variety of communications from a multitude of users and whilst you can no longer listen to the police, there are many other interesting things to listen to if you know where to look. So you often hear the term, they're going digital, but what does that actually mean? So users upgrade their old analog systems, like the police did, to digital systems. So these are more modern, more effective, and allow extra features and benefits that analog systems don't allow. Digital users can still be monitored with digital voice scanners or a cheap SDR dongle with the relevant plugins. So what's killing the hobby? So the main thing that damages the radio hobby of scanning is the sharing of frequencies, believe it or not. And this is more relevant nowadays. So the main issue is with DMR frequencies. So people share frequencies, users, talk groups, slots on the colour codes of DMR users freely on the internet forums and Facebook groups. And the user of that company or organisation or the company that provides the radio system can see this information and take action. So they can switch their DMR networks to encrypted and this is done simply via software and is usually free of charge. So where do you look? So the, the portion of the spectrum we're going to cover, which is very low band VHF to UHF is vast. It contains many frequencies, many users and many modes. And if you want to scan effectively you need to know where to look. So do your research, know the band plan and you'll soon know where to find signals that you want to monitor. So what equipment do I need? So what do you want to listen to? If you're only interested in airband, then you only need an airband scanner. If you want to listen to everything, then get a scanner with no gaps. This means there's no parts of the spectrum missing from the scanner's coverage. If you want to listen to digital voice, then you need a digital scanner such as an AOR or a Whistler. If you don't want a scanner, or you can't afford to spend a lot of money on a scanner, then an SDR dongle can be very handy. These can be bought cheaply from eBay and allow you to view the spectrum on your PC and navigate your favourite frequencies easily. Various plugins allow you to listen to digital voice transmissions and data modes such as paging. Should you buy a frequency directory? No, in my opinion. So there's many frequency directories in book and CD form around on the internet, but they're out of date. So anyone who is into radio scanning will know that things are constantly changing. Users go digital, companies become defunct, others change frequencies, etc, etc. And if you buy a frequency directory from 1993, 97, 2004 or 2018, they'll all tell you different things. And they're all built on top of each other and a lot of inaccurate and old information isn't filtered out. So you can be programming things into your scanner that are long since gone quiet. Antennas. So a radio is only as good as its antenna and if you use a standard rubber duck on your scanner, you're not going to hear a lot. Radios perform far better when the antenna antenna is external, high up and tuned for the band you're listening to. So you'll struggle to hear CBs on a VHF and UHF antenna on a scanner, um, I've tried. If you want the best performance on a specific band, then look at an antenna that is best suited for that band and remember with antennas, height is might. A disc -owned antenna is okay for starting out as the wide band and cover most of VHF and UHF, although signal strength in certain areas may be reduced due to the antenna not being band specific. For VHF and UHF scanning, a 2 meter 70 centimeter collinear antenna would work as it's dual band and designed for frequencies that sit quite close to the commercial and amateur bands. So what we'll do now is we'll look at the radio frequency band plan for the UK with some international elements in there as well and I'll sort of show you and give you a flavour of where you can find certain things to listen to. Okay, so 27.6 to 27.9 is the UK Citizen Band. So CB Radio, or Citizen Band Radio, has made somewhat of a comeback in recent years, and the set frequencies are allocated to UK and Europe. There's 40 channels allocated to the band, CB is used for general chat between mobile and home base stations. Uh, truckers also use CB and AM and SSB are now legal modes on CB radio. And if you want to look at the frequencies for the different modes then they're available um, online. 
28.0 to 29.7 is the 10 meter amateur bands. So 10 meters is the widest of the HF bands but is empty during the years of the sunspot minima. There's often propagation to somewhere at many times so it's always worth monitoring and during the sunspot maxima it can be open worldwide. CW, data, SSB and FM and satellite modes are all used on 10 meters and there are beacons and satellite downlinks as well as packet radio, slow scan TV and fax calling on that band. 31.0 to 40.1 40 is analog cordless phones, so there's still analog cordless phones to be found in this area of the spectrum. All modern phones are now digital DECT, which can't be monitored, but there's still analog phones in use. But it's down to you to decide if you should listen to somebody else's call. Slightly further up, 47.4 to 47.5 is more analog cordless phones. These are a lot less common. Um, but these frequencies are also an allocated to the old analog cordless phones. Again, think should you be listening to people's phone calls, and after all, the chances are it's your elderly neighbour that hasn't yet upgraded to a digital phone. 49.8 to 49.9 is low power devices. So this portion of the spectrum is home to numerous devices. Some older walkie-talkies operate on these frequencies, although they're very short range and low powered. You can find baby monitors here, although this is another device that's not really meant to be eavesdropped on. 50.0 to 52.0 is the 6 meter amateur band. So the 6 meter amateur band is a multi-mode band for amateur radio operators. You can find a mixture of telephony and digital modes that include FM, simplex and repeater channels, packet radio, internet voice gateways, APRS, fax, RITI and SSTV. And there are numerous repeaters around the UK that operate on 6 meters. 77.6 to 86.3 is low band PMR, so there's five frequencies in this band allocated which are part of the UK simple light allocation. And you can see them on the screen there. Although these are the least used of the UK simple light frequencies, this portion of the band is still home to various operators. Most of these are now taxi companies and agricultural users. 70.0 to 70.5 is the 4 meter amateur band and I made a mistake here. The 4 meter amateur band that I should say is a multi-mode band for amateur radio operators. You can find a mixture of telephony and digital modes that include FM, simplex and repeater channels, packet radio, internet voice gateways, APRS, fax, RITI and SSTV. There's numerous repeaters around the UK that operate on 4 meters that should say and although 4 meters is relatively quiet you can still find amateurs on there. 88.0 to 108.0 is the commercial broadcast band, so this portion of the spectrum is allocated to commercial radio users. These range from local and community radio stations to national broadcast stations such as BBC Radio, and this band is analogue only. 108.0 to 112.0, um, this portion of the civil air band is allocated to DME idents, ILS localizers and TACAN idents. Although there's no voice here, there are signals to be heard. The DME is a transponder based radio navigation technology that measures slant range distance by timing the propagation delay of VHF or UHF radio signals. TACAN is a navigational system used by military aircraft. It provides aircraft with a bearing and distance to a ground station and ILS enables pilots to conduct an instrument landing if they are unable to establish a visual contact with the runway. 1112.0 to 1179.9 is TACAN and DME idents and ATIS and VOR. So this portion of the civil air, air band is allocated to TACAN and DME idents, ATIS and VOR signals. There's no voice here except on ATIS signals, um, but there are signals to be heard in this portion of the band. 117.9 to 138.0 is the International Civil Aviation Band. So this large portion of the spectrum is allocated to international civil aviation. Aircraft and airports operate AM radio systems. Frequencies in this band are often used for approach, radar, tower, attest, departure and many other uses. 121.5 is used for international distress and is worth monitoring. The band is extremely busy at all times and if you're not local to an airport you can still hear passing aircraft on your radio from miles away. 138.0 to 140.9 is high band VHF. So this portion of the band was formerly used by gas, water and electric companies but these started to be phased out in the mid 1990s. 
It is still possible to hear some power company communications around 138 MHz, although this is rare. These frequencies are more commonly allocated to chunk networks for bus companies and airport nowadays, although the majority are now on UHF. 140.9 to 141.2 is independent local radio talkback, so although pretty quiet, this portion of the spectrum is used for talkback systems for BBC outside broadcasts and independent local radio stations. These types of stations are usually more active on UHF. 143.7 to 143.9 is illegal paragliders, so hang gliders, paragliders and motorised paragliders use this portion of the band over around 9 frequencies for air-to-air -air communications. They often use frequencies illegally so can be found anywhere around 143 MHz. They also use PMR446. 144.0 to 146.0 is the 2 meter amateur band. So the 2 meter amateur band is a versatile band for licensed users. The band can be used for SSB, SSTV, fax, repeaters, simplex communications, digital modes and amateur satellite. The International Space Station downlink can be heard on 145.8. Numerous repeaters can also be heard on the band. Raynet use various frequencies for 2 meters on operations and tropospheric, tropospheric ducting can bring signals in from further afield. 145.8 to 146.0 is allocated to the amateur satellite service. You can hear CW, FM, SSB or, or MGM signals from a series of low earth orbiting amateur satellites. 145.8 is reserved as a downlink frequency for satellites such as the International Space Station and astronaut Tim Peake could be heard on this frequency regularly during his time on the International Space Station. 144.0 to 144.025 is where the UKAC 2 meter SSB contest stations can be heard. 145.5 is the common call-in frequency for 2 meters, and on here you'll hear local stations calling as well as stations further afield working mobile and portable. These include SOTA activations. Repeaters can be found between 145.5935 and 145.7935. The mostly six, there are 16 channels allocated to these repeater outputs and the mostly FM, but digital voice repeaters are slowly growing in numbers so both can be heard on this band. 146 to 148, 152 to 153 and 154 to 156 was the UK Police and Fire which is now defunct. So this portion of the radio spectrum was allocated to the United Kingdom Police and Fire for both simplex and repeater operations. The Police, Fire and Ambulance Services now use Airwave which is a form of Tetra Digital and you cannot listen to the UK Emergency Services anymore on a scanner, radio or SDR receiver. The transmissions are fully encrypted and any lost or stolen radios are locked out of the network rendering them useless to anyone wanting to listen to the police. 153.0 to 153.5 is wide area paging, so these are the horrible noises you hear on your scanner, um, but they can be monitored. SDR dongles with software plugins enable pager frequencies to be, to be decoded into text. These are mainly used by alarm and security companies, doctors and emergency services. 158.7 to 172.0 is short term hire. So there are 30 channels allocated to the VHF portion of the short term higher allocation. These are frequencies that are used on a temporary basis by companies, organisations and events. For example, a marathon event may be granted a temporary licence with the rental of equipment for the duration of the event. This area of the band has many users and is constantly changing so it's worth scanning through. 147.3 to 161.8 is search and rescue. So there are numerous channels allocated to the search and rescue um, in this portion of the band. These channels are used for both simplex and repeater based communications. Bear in mind that training exercises are often conducted in high up areas such as hills and mountains so their signals can travel a long way. 156.4 to 163.0 is marine band. So marine VHF radio equipment is installed on all large ships and most seagoing small craft. It's also used with slightly different regulations on some rivers and lakes. It's used for a wide variety of purposes including summoning rescue services and communicating with harbours, locks, bridges and marinas. The marine band users include ship to ship, ship to air and ship to land. There are maritime safety information broadcasts from land-based coast guard stations every two hours across the UK and these can be heard quite far inland with a good setup. 
158.5 to 181.7 is high band VHF, PMR, land mobile and base. So nowadays this part of the band is used by taxi companies, security and shop watch, local councils and numerous other companies and organisations. This part of the band is quieter these, these days due to doctors, RSPCA and utility companies, waste collection and other users disappearing but there's still plenty to listen to. Community repeaters can also be found here which serve many businesses across towns and cities. The band is rapidly being taken over by DMR users and DMR offers better performance and the option for users to enable encryption for private communications. DMR users include shopwatch schemes, security, haulage and skip companies and many others. To listen to DMR, a digital voice scanner is required or an SDR dongle with the relevant software plugins. UK Simple Light or formerly UK Gen frequencies in the VHF high band PMR um, allocation can be seen on screen on the screen there. These are extremely active by many users. 180 to 203.0 is trunk networks. So this section of the spectrum is allocated to trunk networks for bus companies and airports across the UK. Many users operate MPT1327 trunk networks which allow many handsets to be used on one network. One-to-one -one calls can be heard on MPT1327 systems. Many users are slowly opting for cellular or Tetra-based systems as MPT1327 networks are slowly being phased out. 174.19-229.0 is DAB radio, so although you won't hear anything but noise on your scanner, this is where DAB broadcast stations live. The lower portion of the band was used for small-scale DAB trials, and the BBC's National DAB Ensemble broadcasts on frequency block 12B, which is 225.648 MHz across the UK. 225.0 to 399.9 is military airband. So the military airband is a vast portion of the radio spectrum which is allocated to ground, air to ground, air to air and air to ship communications. Users include UK military, United States Air Forces in Europe and foreign, foreign military transiting UK airspace. The band is very active due to the large amounts of UK and American traffic in our skies. RAF Mildenhall and RAF Lakenheath are both home to US AFE squadrons which train daily over the UK. Aircraft practice and carry out refueling exercises over the North Sea and the best way to hear activity if you're not near an air station is to listen out on air to air frequencies. The band can be very busy during air shows which take place up and down the UK throughout the year. 390.0 to 394.9 is the UK police fire and ambulance communications which is better known as Airwave. So this portion of the band is allocated to all United Kingdom emergency services. This is encrypted and cannot be listened to in any way. Scanners will just pick up the noise of these digital transmissions and any lost or stolen handsets locked out of the system, meaning they're useless and cannot be used to monitor, monitor any emergency service communications. 402.4 to 425.0 is Ministry of Defence and United States Air Forces in Europe. So this portion of the band is relatively quiet but is allocated to Ministry of Defence and the United States Air Forces in Europe. Various USAFE sites such as RAF Mildenhall, RAF Lakenheath, RAF Alconbury and RAF Croton use these frequencies and some of the sites operate digital P25 systems. United States Air Forces in Europe communications can be heard from the military training ground at Salisbury Plain. 430.0 to 440.0 is the 70cm amateur band. 70cm amateur band is a versatile band for licensed users. The band can be used for all modes but is generally quieter than 2 meters and operators more commonly use FM. CW, SSB, FM and DV and data modes can all be used on 70cm and like 2 meters it has simplex channels as well as repeaters and these repeaters are both digital as well as analog. The calling frequency on 70 centimetres is 433.5. 433.0 to 433.7 is LPD433. So LPD433 or low power device 433 MHz is a UHF band in which license free communication devices are allowed to operate. LPD handheld radio radios are authorised for license free voice communications use in most of Europe using analog FM. LPD is also used by wireless instruments and digital devices such as car key locks and this band is shared on a secondary basis for both licensed and licensed exempt users so 
amateur radio operators and LPD operators with the primary user being the Ministry of Defence. 440.0 to 467.2 is UHF PMR, land mobile and base. So formally the home of UHF police communications, this large portion of the spectrum is allocated to a whole multitude of users from security, shot watch schemes, taxis, ports, docks, construction, airport and everything else in between. This is possibly the most active area of the spectrum due to its variety of licensed and non-licensed users. The commercial portion of this band is rapidly being taken over by DMR users. As I said earlier, DMR offers better performance and the option for users to enable encryption for private communication. DMR users include shop watch schemes, security, haulage and skip companies and many others. And to listen to DMR, a digital voice scanner is required or an SDR dongle with relevant software plugins. 446.0 to 446.1 is PMR446. So PMR446 is a mode of communication that is open without licensing for business and personal use in most countries of the European Union. The allocation supports both FM and digital communications, which is DMR and DPMR. There are many users of PMR446, including children, small businesses, events, motorcycle instruction and lots more. The channels are very active and overcrowded and 2018 saw the additional the addition of eight extra channels to ease congestion on the band. PMR446 users must use equipment that is handheld and portable and this equipment must be not part of a base station or mobile installation. The equipment must not must not have a detachable antenna and must not exceed a power output of 0.5 watts or 500 milliwatts. Many users use equipment that is not type approved such as Bofeng radios and these are illegal to use on PMR446. Many CB and amateur radio operators also use PMR446 for general chatter and long range DX. The range of PMR from hilltop sites can be impressive in the right conditions and many long distance contacts can be made. The common calling channel for PMR446 is channel 8 although most users tend to chatter on channel 1. And you can see the DMR and analog PMR channels there from 1 to 16, and the DPMR channels there from 1 to 32. Okay, so back to the main 440 to 467 decimal 2 part of the spectrum. Um, UK simple light, or formerly UK gem frequencies in this band, um, are as follows you can see them on the screen there and these are also like the VHF ones extremely active by many users especially the 449 megahertz frequencies 426.0 to 462.4 is short term higher so there's 26 channels allocated to UHF short term higher these are frequencies that are used on a temporary basis by companies organizations and events so as I said earlier for example a marathon event may be granted temporary license with the rental of equipment for the duration of the event this area of the band has many users and is always changing so is well worth scanning through. 450 to 453, 457 to 457 decimal 2 and 456 to 467 was the UK Police Fire and Ambulance Service which is now defunct so like the VHF portion um, this UHF portion was allocated to the United Kingdom Police for both simplex and repeater operations. The police fire and ambulance services now use Airwave which is a form of Tetra and you cannot listen to UK emergency services anymore on a scanner, radio or SDR receiver. The transmissions are fully encrypted and any lost or stolen radios are locked out of the network rendering them useless to anyone wanting to listen to the police. But that's where they used to be. 417.5 to 449.7 is Polycon. So Polycon is a dedicated radio system used for Coast Guard and search and rescue helicopters. It enables helicopter crews to communicate between pilots, winchmen, medics and other personnel on board and they use low power dedicated devices but they can be heard from miles away due to the elevated location of a rescue helicopter. And you can see the frequencies on screen there. Okay, back to the main section of the UHF band, 440 to 457. Um, you can see the UK fire allocation here, so although the UK fire brigade now uses Tetra Airwave, fire crews sometimes use FM analog handsets on the ground to communicate with each other. These are not often active but are still worth monitoring and it's worth noting that these are actually transferring over to DMR nowadays as well. 
462.1 to 469.9 is the Bofeng BF888S frequencies and I thought I'd include these um, because the BF888S is the radio of choice for many users wanting cheap ready to use communications. They're not ready to use however as the frequencies that come programmed in a new BF888S are only for testing at the factory and are illegal to transmit on. Many users who buy these radios use them out of the box and due to their low cost they're becoming popular. The frequencies that come in these radios are worth monitoring and the spread between 462.1 and 469.9 over 16 channels. Okay, just some other things to look out for in the 440 to 457 UHF band. 446 to 447 is home to television outside broadcasts. 442 to 447 is home to TV studio talkback links. 454 to 455 is home to many call to prayer transmissions from mosques. And 454 to 455 and 467 to 470 is home to TV studio talkback links, outside broadcast transmissions and communications from film and television companies that are on location. And finally, 470 to 855 is local radio talkback and microphones. So this portion of the band is allocated to local radio talkbacks that are out on location and wireless microphones. Microphones are used by TV, film crews, news crews and theatres but are low powered and you need to be extremely close to pick them up. I used to live quite close to a TV studio and used to pick these microphones up all the time. So get scanning. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. The information in this presentation is only a guide and most of it is based on my experiences and what can be gleaned from the internet. Um, some of the information may become out of date due to the ever-changing nature of the hobby and the portions of the band plan are only a rough guide to help explain where certain things can be found. But the point of it was to say that there's still plenty to listen to other than the police. And did I mention you can't listen to the police either? Thanks very much for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did enjoy it then make sure you click the like button. If you've not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and if you want to leave any feedback, comments, suggestions, questions or anything like that, then leave them in the box below and I'll get back to you. And other than that, I'll say thanks for watching. 7-3 for now guys, we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.